This video is sponsored by Liquid IV. More on them after the reaction, people. Bonjour, citoyen de la nation rejetée. I really work to remember that. We are here today. It is John and Greg in the hot seats to watch Ridley Scott's Napoleon, a topic, a figure of history we both know a ton about. Are you excited, G? I am so excited. I've watched every movie Napoleon's ever made. Yes. I've read all of his books. Love him. I've bought his art. I know everything about Napoleon. Mm -hmm. I'm a Napoleon. This is it's Napoleon. This is Napoleon. Uh, Napoleon Sir is what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Me too. I'm excited to watch French Joker. So, hey, leave a like on this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified every time one of these movies comes your way. As well, thanks to the gang over at Prepper for helping us chop down these highlights. And if you want to get the complete Napoleon experience, all six hours of it, alongside Greg and myself, come on over to patreon.com slash the real rejects. Grab your own copy, sync up with us, enjoy the movie as well as all the other shows and movies we have watch-alongs and highlights for over there. It's a blast. It's a good time. And I think that's all the housekeeping. Let's go. Let's, let's go to France. Let's do this thing. Did you see a trailer for this? I didn't see a trailer for it. Nope. <laughs> I've heard a couple of reviews, like, vague, like, just like, oh, it was good or not. But, yeah, otherwise, no. 1789. Man, I don't know jack about Napoleon. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> People are turned to misery to revolution and brought back by revolution to misery. Whew. I actually said French have a disillusioned by food shortages and widespread economic depression. Ha ha. Yeah. Anti-royalists would soon send King Louis the 16th and 11,000 of his supporters to a violent end and set their sights on the Queen of France. Missed it. Missed it. Something about Queen Marie of Marie Antoinette. Let them eat cake. Packs a thud. Is that the guillotine? <laughs> oh, even just the sound effect. Imagine oh. going out that way. The mess of Kirby's in this. Wow. Cheeps. It was a simpler time, boy. She's just being treated like the ex-wife of every celebrity. Yeah. This is what she deserved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> off with her head! Off, off, off! Oh, is that song about Marie Antoinette? Yep. You can learn most of the plot of this movie just by listening to the yeah, yeah, yeahs. I do like the music being very much in contrast with the horrendous terror that's about to take place for this poor individual or do they i never, not like her i don't i don't know yeah does she does she have this coming was she detached from Ooh, the it feels so will, real will and needs of her people i know they never focus on that part where they're sliding the brace down you know the human head lives for several seconds after it is decapitated that's what i'm looking forward to in life <laughs> sweet sauce Oh, cool. Let them eat stump. Oh, there's your boy. <laughs> Feels quirk quirky. Yeah. Now she was guilty of three charges against you and high treason for acting in the interests of the enemy. Cheap. No, yeah, she deserved to have her head cut off. The British Navy have taken the port of Toulon. Half the French fleet is trapped there. If we lose those ships, the Republic will fall. Well, we can't let that happen. There are only 2,000 English troops in Toulon. We are short of artillery and led by a general who is a court painter. Who is an idiot? It is not necessary to recapture Toulon itself. The town is not a town. The town is a port. Homeboy's not even attempting an accent. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be one of those every accent movies, I think. <laughs> Capture the fort that dominates the harbor, and you have the city. We must make an example, or other cities will fall. And I, for one, will never let the royalists or the English take my region. Yeah, no surrender. It's 
good response. Man, when it comes to sets and stuff, Redley Scott knows how to hire the right people every time. General Cato? Lucien, my dear brother. I'm in Toulon already. And it sucks. Whoo! Gonna need a lot more cannons. This looks like a really fun set to be on. If we do not succeed, those in power will only see us as Corsican ruffians unfit for higher office, and our mother's ambitions will be quashed. And Corsican ruffians are no bueno. <laughs> yeah, bad hombres. I gotta simplify some of this for my brain. Surprise is my advantage, but I will win by fire. I cannot wait for your arrival, your brother, Napoleon. Win by fire. That is a, a way to end a letter. So he's scouting the scene right now and disguising himself as just a regular civilian. Yeah. The classical music provides a bit of like a whimsical tone that I wasn't expecting. And I mean, the film does have like a classical feeling sort of sense of scope and, and just, I don't know, the way they're lensing everything and the austerity of a lot of the landscapes and stuff. <laughs> Drink and always bring people together, no matter where you are in the world and what time. Napoleon seems so terrified right now, so nervous. It's a big revolt. I mean, he's making his rise. He's not Napoleon just yet. Breathe, Napoleon. You got this, man. <laughs> Just flying by the seat of his pants. <laughs> Whoa. Ah, cool. It's one thing we can all relate to is rebelling against the British. I miss this kind of action in cinema. <laughs> His expressions are great. Just keep it together, Napoleon. Man, all these stunt workers and extras. Get the up there. Oh, what Jeez. a fun set. Just the explosions happening on, on the actual stage. That was not expected. <laughs> yeah, what kind of movie are we in? <sighs> that was extremely violent. David Ayer's Napoleon. David Ayer's your reference? Sure. I'll take a David Ayer Napoleon. Yeah. But wow, we just As watched Fury. For the there violence, horses. I did. Yes, so. There's yeah. battlefield horse gore, you know. <laughs> Very realistic depictions you're not used to seeing. <laughs> Get up there, Napoleon. <laughs> Team Napoleon. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you're supposed to take away from all this. Oh my god. Ooh. Oh, sweet. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I want to start a counter of how many heads get lopped off across this. <laughs> Sam. It's so weird to see him without his hat on. Jesus. Wow. Oh. Cool. This is some cool violence. I know. Ready the cannon. Set. Oh, look at him. He's coming into his own. He's focused. Yeah. Come on, Napoleon. <laughs> This is a beautiful looking film. Woo. Thieving pirates. Great shot. This is a very, whoa, very striking time period aesthetically, always. Damn, they really built all these ships? I guess maybe they're miniatures, some of them, but. 
Beautiful. Wow, you can like feel the flames. Oh, what a formation. Captain Napoleon Bonaparte, I award you the rank of Brigadier General. My man! Do we like Napoleon? We love Napoleon. Okay. Who's your favorite French dictator? Comment below. Oh, he's a dictator. Eventually. Not yet, though. No, okay. Now he's just the commander or whatever. I promised you brilliant successes, and I've kept my word. Brilliant success. Although it is a little confusing that we just defeated the British and half of these French dudes have British accents. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy for you, buddy. That was a really well done sequence because as fraught and dark as it was, it was still able to keep up with everything that was going on. And it does like dip in and out of just like the chaos of war in this point in time where it is so personal and just like people up against each other. <laughs> For mother. Jesus Christ. For mother? What kind of mother did you have? The current leadership of France has passed from enthusiasm to reckless ambition, and the public perception of the guillotine is lawless passion. Nice. By Robespierre. Oh. He is unfit to rule. Robespierre has a rep throughout history for sure. Is Napoleon asleep? Yep. <laughs> my man. There is no man in this room who has objected to my methods. If you say I am guilty, you are all guilty. Oh. That's what I say in my relationship. Only I can fix this. Arrest him! Arrest him? Will they just succumb to that? How fragile the rule of law is. That dude just doing like a people's elbow back there. <laughs> Ooh. Yes, with my tiny gun. Whoa! Wow. Yeah. Coward. Oh my god. The guillotine, my friend. I thought he was going to be like, it's real, all right. <laughs> it's blood, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> I know it's just the time and place, but when you do shit like that, it just keeps reminding me of pirates. <laughs> End of the reign of terror. Are we about to celebrate Bastille Day or something here? Every French viewer of this video is going to be like typing in the comments nonstop. <laughs> The movie should do a good enough job communicating what's happening without us having to w read that, a history book. That's, <laughs> that's true. If it's a good enough adaptation of the novel, you know. Wow. Like an ancient witch. Writer. Galadriel. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I saw the opening scene. That is not an accurate depiction. <laughs> it's starting to come back to me. She was very out of touch with the needs of her people, from what I recall vaguely from history. The irony of the let the famous let them eat cake. <laughs> oh. <laughs> In true classic theater fashion, no women on the stage. <laughs> Savage. I mean, it is highlighting how thin the barriers between savagery and civility are. Yeah, people complain about comedy today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Walk into the room looking like Joe Para. Hello, my name is Napoleon, and I'm gonna lead us to victory. You know, we're in France, baby. No sense of human decency. We're in the enlightened part of the world, all right? We're in Bohemia Prime. Damn, she looks way different with that Why are you staring at me? Liz Salander hair. Am I? Yes. I was not. Oh, you she said yes before he said no, I was <laughs> not. <laughs> I was staring at, at your face. At your f face. 
What is this costume you have on? This is my uniform. I led the French victory at Toulon. <laughs> he just wanted to drop that line tonight. Yeah, he was just waiting for anyone who would listen. Do not tell me your name. I will guess it. Give me 200 chances. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like that while this is high society, everyone's still like a little sweaty and like caked up. Like it looks like the real version of high society. Very young man who wishes to see you. His name is uh, Eugene Boanet. Oh, Easter egg. Oh, he's from the first one. What do you want? My father's saber. It was taken from him before he was arrested and executed. We need new Kaiba crystals. I cannot allow citizens to have weapons in their possession. The sword is a keepsake for me to remember my dear late father. Perhaps, but it is a weapon nevertheless. How do people, like, prepare food? My mother said that you were the only man of authority to retrieve the sword. Who's the mother? Oof! That light. <laughs> All of these are from officers who were sentenced to die. Did no one think to attach names to any of them? No. Uh, no names. Damn. Find a needle a in guess. a needle stack. Just take the most rusty one. Kid's gonna be like, this isn't it. I would know the sword anywhere. He does have a very relaxed presence on the, in this time period. Like, he, he fits in in a way that normally people be a little more posh in the way they behave. Yeah. Thank you. There she is. Yeah, you knew it. There's the Madre. My compliments to the chef of this fine family. He's hallucinating her. <laughs> Is he touching himself right now? Is yes. this his fantasy? Yeah. Clunk, 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 clunk. <laughs> Would you like to sit closer? <laughs> Did they intentionally make him shorter? Maybe. I know that's a debated part of the actual history as to like whether he was actually short or if people just did that to taint his image later. Oh, it's a date. Will you be my boyfriend? Yes, no, maybe. What did he just do? <laughs> He's just being sensitive, you know? She probably perfumed it. Napoleon wouldn't be Napoleon if it wasn't for her. Yeah. This is real love right here. Chemistry unmatched. When you look at me, do you see an aristocrat? Or an aristocat. No. My husband had more than one lover. And when his head was cut off, all his mistresses watched. At least you weren't alone. When I was in prison, I was told the only way to survive was to get pregnant. Yeesh. Wow. Do I need to warn you of my indiscretions? <laughs> oh, I don't give a shit. Does where I have been concern you? Past is the past. But like, how many were talking here? Like ballpark. <laughs> of course. If you look down, you'll see a surprise. Uh, Once you see it, you will always want it. <laughs> this works. Yes, mommy. This works. <laughs> <laughs> It's fascinating. This, this movie is framed like paintings, but it doesn't behave like a painting. <laughs> no doubt you've seen the chaos in the streets. Yes. Can you hear it? <laughs> yeah. It's like happening right at <laughs> <laughs> These new windows are really yeah. soundproof. <laughs> there is a belief amongst the committee that there is an attack on the council coming by this mob. I have less than 4,000 troops and very little in the way of weapon. There are 40 cannons in Sablon. I could have them here in three hours. This mob is 20,000 strong. Yes. You don't need to take down all 20,000, though. What would you intend to do if this assignment of defense was transferred to you? <laughs> uh, tread carefully. I accept on the condition that I command this as I see fit, without interruption. Delivering devastating victory via my water slide. <laughs> Royalist Insurrection, 5th October, 1795. Just get it done, Napoleon! Yeah. Let's go. What a harrowing ass shot. The emptiness in those eyes. Eesh. Wipe them out, Napoleon. 
three hours later. Wow! <laughs> Wow, wow, whoa, your foot. I mean, you had to get the job done. That's true. Somebody had to make the tough decisions. Marie Joseph Rose Tacher accepts as her husband Napoleon Bonaparte. Dynamite. Do you consent? Yes, I do. I'm already, like, very suspicious of how accurate this love story is. Yes. <laughs> it seems like the very Hollywood thing to do the whole, here's who he was as he rose the ranks and became the dictator we all know and love. And then yeah, yeah. we have the love story. Like, but here's where he was a human. Yeah, and the love story, while I am intrigued, does feel like the, the most elevated or fantastical part thus far. But I'd love to be wrong. Hey, here, here. Kill that man. This. I'm on Napoleon's side, man. If we're going to watch this through his lens, I am going to experience it rooting for him. Yeah, this movie is an endorsement of all of his views and actions. <laughs> Dude. Dude. Uh, With your breasticles hanging out like that? Don't be getting jealous, dog. You said you weren't going to get jealous. If I see my wife talk to another man, I think about that for a long time <laughs> and contemplate doing something. Hi! So for those watching the YouTube cut, Napoleon's trying very hard to satisfy his woman. Yeah. That's... And she looks uh, not moved at all by this experience. After that lovemaking scene, I really see myself in Napoleon, man. Yeah, man. Pull that bone apart. It's like I know what it's like. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I follow that was just before the shoot. Alexander the Great and Caesar, as I have been sent to liberate Egypt. I have forty thousand men, and the sights are wondrous, and the weather stifling hot. Sure. Plan for attacking England to their eastern empire. That's what I'm talking about. But my achievements seem slight, as they keep us apart. I mean, Napoleon might not be physically small in this movie, but he does have an inferiority complex. Sure. Yeah. Oh, massively so. Wow. The friggin' pyramids, dude. Dude. Oh, my God. Man's got to do what a man's got to do. That's right. That's right. No matter how wonderful the world. Dear wife, this love I have for you is a kind of death. A little death, yes. Petit more. There's no survival for me except in you. Hello again. What are you doing? Ah! Good morning, Lucia. If you loved me, you'd love me twice a day. Who are you doing? Tell me there are no snakes in your bed, in your legs, inside what is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Write me and tell me that you realize that I love you beyond the limits of imagination. Cheating. Of which I have much. <laughs> you cheat on a great man like this? Yeah. He's <laughs> a great man. <laughs> Wow, all the locations, and I, I really feel like you, you can feel the weather in each scene you cut to. I know, and then it makes it all the more fascinating that Ridley Scott shoots like four movies a year, and then they still feel like completely entrenched in where they are. There's a lot of like filmmaking technical marvel on display. With consistent pensive music that plays. Yes. With a hint of irony. Whoa. Tiptoeing. Ha <laughs> ha, give me an, PA, get me an apple box. Damn. Respect. Oh, he got a little bit of a haircut. Give him a wet willy. I'm gonna do that. Woo! Yep. Thing's gonna disintegrate. What secrets did it whisper to you from beyond the grave? Are there limits to what I can tell you? Only you create the limits. No, well, shouldn't be. Should I tell you something at the risk of giving you personal pain? He's going to find out his wife is cheating. Your wife has taken a lover named Hippolyte Charles. What a name, too. Why would you cheat on this guy? Troops, we're moving out. We got to go get my wife. <laughs> This guy's like, I told Napoleon. He just loved it. He's he just not, not my fault. It. He didn't believe me. He said, go for it. Do He's more. Not my, not my Take fault more lovers. 
You expect me to believe this? Yes. That my wife would do this to me? Mm. Yes. No dessert for you. You may leave. <laughs> Punish him. I would like my dessert, please. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> what a great frame. <laughs> I think that was intentional. Yes. It's like, is this the master? Lucille is my lover. She writes to me. Josephine's lady in waiting is your lover. Strategic choice. Prepare two frigates and two smaller vessels in the greatest secrecy. Ooh. I'm returning home. <laughs> no, this I shouldn't. Will be seen as desertion. Why did you tell him now? You should have waited. Yeah, dude. General Claybear will be informed of his success in the command after I left. <laughs> Man, she's ruining the war. Yeah, come on, dude. Keep your head in the game. You changed, bro. You changed. She's just like every ex-celebrity's wife. Yeah. Or current wife. When celebrity is having downfall. Oh my god, it's made the headlines. Uh -oh. Wow, it has. Oh my god. And a cartoon to boot. This is not going to bode well for his inferiority complex. Damn, dude. They leaked the texts. If I was him, I'd start with the children. Yeah. And Work then your her. way from the bottom up. Yeah. yeah. Punishments all around. Where's my wife? She has left to greet you in Leon. Whoa, dude. Where is my wife? Jesus. She left earlier today, General. Leon? Yes, sir. The entire world knows of my arrival, but not my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Such a little boy. Such a little boy. So petulant, yeah. She's terrified for her life. Oh, she grown her hair out too. To demonstrate the passage of time, John. Yeah. Or she put on a wig. Oh no. You're lucky he's just kicking you out, man. He could easily behead you. Yeah, and he did pack your shit. What kind of creature are you? How could you care so little? For me and my feelings. <laughs> you are a selfish little pig. Wow. I would not try to touch his hand. I'm sorry. Oh. That's not enough. I wouldn't forgive this man. I want you to say that I am the most important thing in the world. Yeah. Wow. I relate with this guy so much. Uh, never mind. You're the most important thing in my life. And without yeah. me, you are nothing. I'm nothing. And you will do anything. I'll do anything. Wow. They're like watching us on screen. I'll do anything. <laughs> like, I, we've had this exact conversation. Yeah. And then we turned the camera on and started shooting the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> You're a beast. Oh, man. He's just going to put you down forever. You're a friggin' beast, bro. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> oh, my God. This is a fireside chat. You want to be great. You are nothing without me. Say it. Wow, the power. Oh. I mean, he's got, like, clear mom problems. He took the cannon out of the horse and, and gave, it, gave to it to her. Yeah. yeah. Do you love me yet? You are just a brute that is nothing without me. I am just a brute that is nothing without you. Yes. Let's go. How can you be on her side? Simpolian. <laughs> 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 you sad, sad little boy. Did you have affairs? Of course I did. Well, yeah, but that's different. Did you love them? No. No, I did not. Oh, okay, never mind. They could be on our side. He literally left the war to come home and talk about this. Were they pretty? Yes. Some of them. Some of them? Oh. More than I do. They cried less. That made them more attractive. Bars? <laughs> yup. <laughs> Just don't leave. You don't have to forgive me. Just promise me you won't leave with them. Sometimes it's easier to sustain the toxic relationship, man. You two are made for each other. <laughs> what is it that made you desert your troops in Egypt? My wife was boning. <laughs> boning a man. Boning while we were apart. What country are we in? Because she doesn't resemble the France that I left. Who should be responsible for her governance while I'm away? <laughs> because it is not you, Citizen Goyer. Way to flip this, my man. This. 
But it's not you. It's certainly you it's are. You. Truthfully. Well, you're very good at scowling. It's not you, Barras. Or you, Talleyrand. Or you, Sayers. I'm going to remember all their names. Yeah, yeah. That one guy opens a diner later on. I have returned to France to find her bankrupt, printing money that is spent within hours. Chapter 11. Austro-Russian overrun of Italy, the Anglo-Russian occupation of Holland, and what appears to be the imminent invasion of France herself. Well, we cannot let that happen. No, someone's got to fix and this. Yet you accuse me of desertion. Oh, my God. Great. That's right, man. You take the take control of the situation. There is there's a lot to learn from this, man. The people will accept my rule if I have your support. Like you, that I believe that the directory is corrupt. Drain that swamp. But together, we can save this country from a restoration of the monarchy. And we can preserve the ideals of the revolution. And I think that a seizure of power is possible. Oh, good. So you expect me to be your sword? More than that. I expect that a coup d'etat, well-timed, well-executed, could transfer power into the hands of three consuls. Yup. Myself, Tuko. And? Galad. And you. Boom. I'm inviting you to the winning side. Oh, yeah, do that. That'll show your wife. That'll show your wife and your mom. Letter of resignation. I'm like not signing anything. You can piss before I sign anything away. Wow. Look at those murals. My God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make this very simple for you. Oh, good. I have documents announcing your resignation from the council. I felt like Paul and him were cool. Yeah. Citizen Moulin, we have a letter of resignation for you to sign. Oh. I am enjoying a succulent breakfast. This what is the f- I will finish my breakfast <laughs> before you catch me! Uh, oh, it's okay. <laughs> you are free. You fly away. <laughs> You're free now. Go. <laughs> Get out of here. The coup. At Christmas. This is a very interesting tone. This emergency session is to draw a list of nominations for a, a new directory to deal with the threat. All right, let's get it going. We are being asked to pass a resolution forming a provisional government to three councils. Yes, and we have three of mine. General Bonaparte and Citizen Sierz and Roger Ducot. Where are the five members of the directory? Please stand up. Your brother, Napoleon Bonaparte, with his show of military might, is acting as an outlaw. Pull it together, Napoleon. Wow. Pull it together, Napoleon. Enough! Enough! If there is any question of what is happening here, I will answer! You stop! Wow, man. Violated the Constitution! Wow. Damn. Nice. Wow, you can really feel camera the camera work. here. Yeah. Oh my god. This is the first time I became aware of a camera. Yeah, I know, right? Whoa! Jeez. Lucky Phoenix really do that? Sure looked like he yeah. did. Yeah. I believe he would throw himself into that. There he goes. <laughs> oh my god. Joaquin Phoenix with his funny escapist runs. We are being terrorized by deputies armed with daggers. And these madmen have outlawed themselves. Goddamn right, way to twist it. And the liberty of this country. Who is me. this guy? I've seen him in stuff. <laughs> they're, they're trying, trying to, to kill, kill me! <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to kill him. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, there's some like actual comedy in this movie. Oh, the, you, this is absolutely <laughs> like a comedy dressed like an austere history, you know, piece. That, like this is low key hilarious. Like, there's a bl there's a black comedy here. It's really really odd, strange. It's quir quirky as shit. <laughs> well, it's got all like the posture and import of like you know the weight you associate yeah. with history, but it's also highlighted yeah just how petty and small so many of these people are. <laughs> Shall we vote? <laughs> Shall we vote, my man? <laughs> <laughs> Style points for days. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, there's some soundproof doors. <laughs> I 
and just like how flippant the people in charge are with like all the stuff that dictates life to the people below. <laughs> like, good to meet you. Is that his mommy? Ah, could this be Josephine? Oh, they haven't met yet. Josephine. Good to see you. Josephine. Madam. Oh, it's Charles. Immediately disinterested. Finally get to meet your daughter-in-law and no interest. But mom, but, but did, you, did you see? M mom, what about? What I need from you is a better understanding of the Russian Tsar Alexander. Would you consider the Tsar an ally to England or France? His trade with England is more beneficial to him than his trade with France. And do you have a sense of British influence in the Russian courts? Uh-oh. I do not, but I imagine it is quite robust. Robust? <laughs> Explain this word, robust. What kind of man is he? Describe him. What does he look like? Well, he's young. Is he hot? He's vain. He's popular. And he wishes <laughs> to remain so. A statue right behind him. His greatest fear is to be killed in his bed like his father. <laughs> <laughs> this makes him dangerously fickle to whoever last has his attention. You run the muff city. Yeah, they know, but he checked the lock every time you walk by the door. Talleyrand! Your Majesty received a letter of peace from the First Consul today. Peace over to us are clearly only for your handling of French public opinion. Wowie. But my warning to you is that he's as hungry for it as any man in the history of the world. So my suggestion would be to take little offering of peace from him. It's no little offering, man. Yeah. Or suffer the consequences for a man bent on peace at any cost. <laughs> Where's John Cena? They know how to veil their threats in such clever ways. I know. I wonder how many people like left all these different conversations, like not getting the undertone. I think he was threatening me. <laughs> Are you aware of my letter of peace to your king? I am not. Shall I repeat it? You may not. <laughs> Take this as a warning to your king. I will keep you guessing. You will watch your borders and your back, and your manners are bound sooner or later to be French. Bam. And I will take the lack of a swift reply as an act of disrespect. You think you're so great because you have both. <laughs> yeah, I want to say that to somebody. <laughs> She's so good at playing man child. Yeah, seriously. She's so good at that. <laughs> Plays it quite a bit. It's developmentally that stunted. The, that would people. be the typecast I would play for Joaquin Phoenix. Sure. Man child. The European families think nothing more of you than a Corsican thug. Uh oh. I suggest that you abandon your role as first consul of France. No. Why would you think this wouldn't make him mad? For the title victorious consul by another name, King. Wow. Bring the monarchy back, baby. King. <laughs> Who decided these hats they he all could, wear? He could become king? Yeah, he could just make it so, I guess. <laughs> just change the structure around a little bit, you know? The blueprint it's already exists. <laughs> My hair has been set. The way you like it. <laughs> what? Beautiful <laughs> Alright, come on then. <laughs> What is? Is he like clopping like a like a, a horse? horse yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's the most unflattering scenes. Just the dispassionate scenes they have here. Yeah, it's like meat hitting other meat. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like there's no real chemistry here. Why aren't you pregnant? Uh-oh. Is that a question? Is that an accusation? Yes. It was a question. <laughs> now it's an accusation. Now it's an accusation. God, that little dip he took with her chair. Well, I've seen Dr. Kovacar and he has no answer. Well, maybe you gotta get on top. Yes. So the gravity... You'd do a headstand afterwards. Along with hopeful thinking and a bit of red wine, he suggested I take the waters at Aix la Chapelle. <laughs> and why haven't you? As wife of the First Consul, I haven't found the time. I spend many hours cleaning up after you. Yep. Imagine doing this as queen. Queening up after me. I don't need to explain to you the importance of this, do I? What, you want an heir? I want one now. Ick. <laughs> My God, show me how the piggies eat. Mm, this is so playful with her. Oh my God. It is the one 
way in which he seems to play. <laughs> Napoleon not have children? Maybe not. He didn't have a Napo baby. <laughs> Vanessa Kirby, man, she's got that elegance. Yeah. Oh, he was allowed to attend this. Damn, dude. It's President Napoleon didn't do anything about him. May God affirm you on his throne and Christ give you to rule with him in his eternal kingdom. This guy knows a lot about Christ. The king can do whatever I want. And with his Caesar halo. I found the crown of France in the gutter. I picked it up with the tip of my sword and cleaned it. <laughs> and placed it atop my own head. King wears king hat and sits on a king chair. A thick ass crown, damn. Yeah. How do you how do you be stacking these crowns with these tiaras and the most august Napoleon <laughs> is crowned and enthroned. Long live the Emperor. Live the Emperor. Hallelujah. We are about like a little over an hour in and I am wondering what the overall cohesive narrative is ultimately gonna amount to though. Yeah, so I kind of just, just feel gonna... like I've been watching like some interesting highlights of so far. An interesting yeah. character study highlight reel showcasing how petulance and idiocy could just get you all the way to the yeah. top. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, is this going to be a rise and fall kind of movie or something? Or is this going to take us to the pinnacle just to drive the point home? But I'm half worried we're just watching like a sequence of events happening. Yeah, yeah. without any real sort of strong nerve. Yeah. Structural end point, yeah. Is it just a force? After years of debate, you can see that it has me divided. I am not ambitious. I have never declared war with anyone. <laughs> <laughs> you are the greatest leader in the history of the world and the world's only chance at peace. This guy's this guy's so smart he knows he has to like tout his ego. Yeah, he needs to gas him up. The security of the empire and peace in the world depends upon an heir. Even if he doesn't believe it. He's just trying to control the situation. He could just have an affair with another woman, can't he? Probably. Would child count i mean i'm sure he could fudge all the you know rules and or what information gets out and make it work yeah change the law that only can be heirs <laughs> i'm going to war to defend our people and my wife cannot provide me an heir wow what a thing to bring up in front of everyone if you do not bear me a child tonight what? there will be a divorce Damn. Jesus, this is a private conversation. There hasn't been enough love making in this home to bear Whoa. a child. Oh. Ooh. There have been years of it. Years. We, we smash every, all, every day. And with more than just me. Wow, this is really uncomfortable. You are empty. You're fat. I enjoy my meals. <laughs> <laughs> ah, dad bud. Get it. Are, are you warmed up? Just a Man, this guy's just like Elvis Presley from the Priscilla movie. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's my favorite Elvis. I love your talent and your taste. And when I'm away, I will miss your grace and your dignity. How many poems you read to inspire that line? Look, I'm always here for you, Francis. But I must admit, I'm overwhelmed with the excitement of the battlefield. I should not deceive you, Alexander. This battle against him will be brutal and terrifying. Oh. But it will be great for the camera. It'll be righteous. That'll be what we showed up for. Austerlitz. I don't know anything about Napoleon, but this movie portrays him in kind of a fast and a really fascinating light. He's a man child that, when it came down to it, he knew how to get the job done. Seemed like he always lived up to the word. Yeah, he knew his fascism, boy. On this day, we celebrate the first anniversary of our coronation. My previous ally has now joined with my enemy. Damn. Our Alexander joined forces with the Prince of Austria. Yes. I have heard that he's been studying the art of war. Sun Tzu? Yes. Sun Tzu, yeah. He tries to copy me. <laughs> the little boy who will make a terrible mistake. I'm going to do the opposite of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I am certain I will bring the laurels of another glorious victory to my army today. Napoleon. The Tsar wow. is back there, there watching so many the different tape. locations we've been going to. This isn't going to be great for y'all. Seems like whenever they have to go to war with England, they have to always take down the Allies first. <laughs> 
французский лагерь. Попались идиоты. Надо сообщить царю. Everything's different when you're going to fight Russia. Interesting. I wonder what that code is. That means it's we're ready to attack. Your Majesty, we are discovered. Never mind. Yeah. To discover. Tell them to rest. Gives me an excuse to keep my eyes closed. Oh, yeah. Doing my meditations. I huh? N F Infantry. I M T I N F J. Imminent Starter! Man, the horrors of that where you have to just rise to the occasion of war. It's relaxing one minute. Well, and, and to be far enough back in time that it's like, hey, the the opposing enemy is coming. How far away are they? All right, keep resting, though. We, we, <laughs> we need you at your best. <laughs> like, it must not feel real until it actually is happening. Yeah. So you can see the whites of their eyes. Or just the ranks of their formation. This This is pretty formidable. Opening a fight of Gladiator was in the snow. Let them think they have the higher ground. <laughs> they got all this fog to work in their advantage. It's poor horses, man. It's been a lot of dead horses. This was a terrible time to be a horse. Wowie. Attack these hay bales. Oh, jeez. There's that zoom. Send in the infantry. Take their position on the higher ground. Have the double. Infantry! Oh, Way yeah. to cook. Let's cook. Let's cook. Yes. Yeah, circle them in. This is a beautiful visual effects. The scope and scale is truly captured. Wow. Like, it feels real. Yeah. Cavalry from the west. Here's their flanks. With them flags out. Now go after them. Yeah. Run away! Wow. Staging of these sequences. No! I like these little nuggets of real life. Yeah, I figured. There you go, use that ice. So at ease. Wow. What a shot. Wowie, yeah. Oh, y'all are done the, for. The action is the best thing about the movie. Yeah. It is gripping. Oh, I love that. Blood smeared in the ice water. Blood in the water. Aw, poor horse. Aw, that's oh, sad. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is like some Mel Gibson war violence here. Yeah. Can you imagine Mel Gibson as Napoleon? Wow, wow, what a sequence. Holy shit. That oh, is maximizing slaughter. your artillery. It's a slaughter. I mean, every time and place to fight is is horrific, but like you you watch this era and you're just like, oh what misery this must have been like. Oh man, you're just like drinking in the blood at that point. Yeah. And everybody on the surface is getting mangled. But everyone's got such cool helmets. Cut off their retreat. Make an example wow, out of them. Wow, dude. Wow. I can't tell what's CGI and what's not, yeah. other than like some of the cannonballs. <laughs> but this all looks real, like yeah. the explosions. Jesus. Oh my god. Cut off their retreat. Don't even let them surrender. It's a literal slaughter. Francis. So nice to finally meet you. So nice to finally meet you. Uh, where may I ask is Alexander? Are we waiting for his arrival before we get started? He will be joining us. He's beside himself with rage. He says, bitch. I realize I must compliment you for making me commit an enormous error. An error? Huh. <laughs> what error have you made? To be speaking with you here and accepting this invitation for peace, I have not followed up my victory. No. Oh. I could have taken the whole Russian and Austrian army prisoners. Yes. <laughs> Toast. It's so weird because he's anything but intimidated. Yeah. But this is, yeah, it's like it's the luck of living in a time and place where it's so easy to craft and manipulate. Like it's, ca they capture it in a way like this is just what he does. Yeah. <laughs> you know, 
Like, I don't really feel like we're really more into the mindset of Napoleon or why Napoleon is the way he is or how yeah. he became to be this genius in the battlefield. Like, all these things that, like, this movie kind of keeps you at a distance on the biopic side of it. And it, it just portrays it like, this is just something he does. <laughs> it, it's it, his job. <laughs> yeah, totally. It just illustrates, like... He's you know, in this time and place, the, the machinations exist to where a guy like this can just waltz his way to the top. It, it, it just seems like so effortless at it, at, at this, like, rise, at the, when it comes to the battlefield stuff. Yeah. Like, we don't really see the struggle or anything. We will conduct a very practical experiment. Oh, my. Thank you, mother. Waiting for you, undressed, ready to receive, is 18-year-old Eleanor Denuel de la Plena. Oh, you just impregnate her. There you go. She's brunette with brown eyes, and the object of this well, hardly unpleasant task <laughs> is to see if you can father a child. Are you going to have an equal test for Josephine? Is it Josephine or is it her? We will have an answer to this nagging question of who is keeping who from an heir to the throne of France. Who is keeping you from your napo, baby? It's not the same. Now, oh, that's a supportive mom. Yeah. It's the mom who's going to have your back. Mm-hmm. Frankly, I don't feel like Mrs. Humphrey would do the same. You know, you'd be surprised. I would be surprised. When you are one of my subjects, you will regret making that remark. <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh, mood lighting. So he can imagine her. You think so? I think he really just is like head over heels for Josephine. And He's so, obsessed. yeah. Damn. Just like Doesn't that. Care. They it's, do like cut through time in a way it's like this is so weird to me. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they give you like a subtitle to tell you what you're in their time. Just like, we're it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like if you didn't without that line of dialogue, I would just assume that he came right back yeah. out to the party. <laughs> like, if I succeed in making the birth of a boy that I shall call my own son, I want you as a witness. Pretend the confinement of the Empress. Your Highness, you are asking me to lie about the status of the mother of your heir. Yes. Yeah, dude, no one's going to find out. I cannot contain that which I know to be the truth. And painful though it is, the truth is that the Empress is no longer capable of bearing you a child. Ouch, how did that happen? Wow. Just marry the 18-year-old. Yeah. Chuck the old one out into the snow. My good Josephine, you know how I've loved you. It is you, to you alone, that I owe the few moments of happiness I have known in this world. My destiny is more powerful than my will. Wow. My affections must yield to the interests of my people. <laughs> the imperial decree to the dissolution of the marriage between the Emperor Napoleon and the Empress Joseph. Wow. That is horrible. Because she could not bear a child. My people desire that this throne where providence has placed me would be given to my children. However, I have lost hope of having children from my marriage. Oh my God. Oh, this is so mean. I've then been led to listen only to the good of the state and to want the dissolution of <laughs> years of my life. This is my burden. You have embellished my life for 15 years, well, the memories of which will remain forever etched in my heart. Sure. Our marriage has become an obstacle for the prosperity of France. <laughs> she has been deprived of one day being governed by the descendants of a man brought to us by providence to mend the evils of a terrible revolution. Oh, Jesus. And restore faith, the throne, and the social order. Oh, my God. They're ruining our God. Where we started versus where we are now. This is for your country. That's what this is, right? Whoa. This is so humiliating. Yeah. Our marriage has become an obstacle for the prosperity of France. Agreeing to the dissolution of our marriage. <laughs> as I must does not change my feelings. A slap will. Yeah. I, I love the stifling laughter from her. The emperor will have in me always his, his truest friend. Oh, I could still keep her around in some way. As my affection slave. <laughs> Guy has no idea how to process emotions. 
You have just pronounced the word which separates us forever. Your mistaken ambition has ever been and will continue to be the guide of all your actions. You could have had true love. You can never doubt the sincerity of my wishes for your happiness. Really? He was. Thank you. Josephine. Dude, you get to go back to, you know, your pick of the litter. You're good. Unless I'm missing a horrible history fact. Yeah, she's going to get assassinated right here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Cannonball just rips through, blows her head off. I thought she had children. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he cast them out into the street. Is he visiting her right away? Yep. <laughs> Jeez. I miss you. It's been four years. <laughs> yes. Has it? What? What movie? <laughs> My child is about to ascend the throne. <laughs> You've shown such great courage so far. So brave you are in being without me. Do not permit yourself to fall into melancholy. I feel like we'll get like a scene with like a great like, oh, here we go, a good ending, and then then we do like this jump. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, but we could have like, and then there will be another settle with the drama. Minutes. Yeah, yeah. Will you write me tomorrow? Mm-hmm. And the next day. Yeah. And the day after that. Mm-hmm. Like as an edit, it's trimmed, it's paced well for an edit. Uh, at the same time, you could tell that like shit's been totally cut out. Yes. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like they make it, it's paced well. Like the pace is consistent. Um, but it is, there are stuff I like. It's like. You said you French, you fight only for money. While we English, we fight for honor. Oh, here we go. I replied, everyone fights for what they lack. <laughs> this is not your story. This never happened to you, did it? That was a sick burn. We have the same saying with my people in the third. <laughs> you. Oh, no. It would be my absolute pleasure and honor if I could call you my brother. Is he? Does he have like a Russian accent? There is a way for you to call me brother. Last night at dinner, I was charmed by your sister. Oh, wow. She's to be married to the Duke of Oldenburg, I'm afraid. Well, intervene, Napoleon. Yeah. Is there a formal offer for Anna? She is 10. Well, you see, Anna, she's 15 years old. That is a detail. <laughs> he is Elvis Presley. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All great men are. Our friendship is built on our mutual distrust of England. When we hold to the continental blockade, we choke them from the trade and we fight for our most sacred rights. That is what is important between us. I just had a thought. <laughs> Write this down. Imagine an army marching by way of Constantinople into Asia would have only to reach the Euphrates to make England tremble and bring her down on her knees before the continent. Dope. Did you have a pleasant journey? It was wonderful. Thank you. Do you need ah, a bigger hat? She seems enamored by him. You're quite petite. I'm not accustomed to that. Because Napoleon's short. How do I look you to you? Do I resemble my portrait? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even more handsome and strong. Oh, oh my. Would you like to see the bedroom? Yes. Would I? Oh my god. She seems way more into him. Come, my child bride. <laughs> the child! Your majesty. Your son. Which one? Put him there. <laughs> What's going on outside? Uh, oh no. That robe, though. Come meet my baby. Why? Why are you Ugh, doing this? Dude, oh, because she still owes him a baby for love. Man, that is so mean. Oh. Can you raise this for me? I want a different one. Make this a king. Yeah, I want a different one. You could have this one. You will understand what I have sacrificed for you. Oh, when my. you watch. A Ridley Scott movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My dear Josephine, I'm sad today. He still writes to her. Tsar Alexander has turned against me and forced me to invade Russia. He's decided to open his ports to England. Wow. I must wipe away my melancholy and begin the march to Moscow. <laughs> Just the types. <laughs> we are in. And so I command the combined forces of France, Austria, Italy, Germany, and Poland. Sometimes I just feel like they don't let enough things sit. <laughs> yeah. We got a director's cut to maintain, and G. Like that was, I was like, oh man, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> like every time it has me, it's like, I'm just cut. And is this to a part the of the war, war of 1812? Like the war stuff is so visually interesting, but in terms of emotional heft to add to the story. 
It's just kind of just turned. It doesn't well, yeah. really thrust anything. It's not, just like, oh, here we are. It's <laughs> not the exact right word, but it is like the more repetitive element because yeah. once you're back out in battle, you're just watching it's, a battle. It's, it's, it's definitely like engaging when it's happening, but it yeah. doesn't really add to the. Doesn't feel like it's developing the, the story. Of the, uh, uh, yeah, the emotional experience of the turn. <laughs> oh. Wow. Ruthless. <laughs> Oh, he's got a, a little bit of horse riding form on him. Oh my god. That is an excellent profile shot. This is epic. Whoa. 28,000. They lose that battle? My dear Josephine. I'm writing to you because I've just won a great battle today. They won. Okay. Did they? Dude, this dude's always coming out on top. Moscow is now only 200 miles I away, think. and they think of you all the while. All yours. I think he's just telling him. So yeah, they they're not winning shit right now. No, he lost. Okay. But he needs this to yeah. He needs to convince himself by telling her. Thank you. Emma. You are the grave of Austerlitz. At least he still survived. And riding oh, yeah. into battle like that and walking out alive. Yeah. Where are you? Oh boy. Where are you? <laughs> Three hundred thousand souls live in the city, and they've all just left. <laughs> Where is everybody? Little boy. Uh huh. Uh huh. Let's get some John Woo action in here. Did they all just retreat from him? I think this is a trap. Do they, is this her way of surrendering? It's not very sporting, is it? For his honor in Russia, it's not mine. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Birds just shitting all over this throne. Uh-oh. Wowza. God. Damn. Rather just burn it all to the ground. That's a hell of a shot, though. Wowie. Who did this? They did. They'd rather not. No, they did not. Be sensible. No, they would do it. They are They'd spiting you, they sir. <laughs> Your Majesty, they did. God. He'd rather burn his own city than me. Yep. With me. I didn't think he had the courage. Call this courage. Yep. We'll go to St. Petersburg and have him burn that too. You're just gonna walk into town. Yep. We have let too much time slip away. We would be marching into the Russian winter. Good. If we go back to Poland, we can wait out the winter month. Yeah, they're counting on this. Remember that I alone know your health, your fears. I thank you as tenderly as I will always love you, Josephine. My friend Josephine. It's like he's winning, but not really. It is strange to write that word to you. You have always been so much more. You've always been my bae. We are winning! <laughs> That's one way of putting it. Fortune has abandoned me. I know that it is what fate has for me. Your words rattle in my head. I am nothing without you. Does he have any relationship with his current wife? Not that we got to see. <laughs> <laughs> it's in that four hour cut. Of the 600,000 men you sent to Russia, only 40,000 have returned. Therefore, you have been exiled. Oh, damn. Jeez. That's 560,000 deaths. The Allied Coalition of Austria, Prussia, Russia, and England, and with the agreement of the French Council, grant you sovereignty of the island of Elba. Elba? Dude, it's That's your birthright. A revenue of 2 million francs from the French fund, pensions for the Bonaparte family and the Empress Marie Louise. What a severance package that is. Yeah. It also provides for Empress Josephine to retain all of her properties on a lotted annual income of 1 million francs. What a severance package. Jesus. But it was never really about the money, was it? No, no, he did it for passion. All I've desired was its glory and would never bring her misfortune. Oh, you already did. They want me to abdicate. Fine, I'll abdicate. Wow, wow, and I, I wonder that must be real. 
It's the other thing too is he's talked so much across this movie about his people and his love for the people and the people's love for him, and we almost never see just the regular people of France. No, yeah, no. Your Highness, Empress. Oh my God! Oh, load if she gets pregnant with his kid. Yes. <laughs> You do not have to lock yourself away just because he's not here. I know what it is like to be underestimated. Yeah. And your spirit, it isn't there. It is yours, and you can use it. Some empowering ass shit right there. Uh, oh, no. He's still in his uniform. Nah, he's pathetic. Dear Josephine, you were mine. You will always be. I cannot stand it any longer. <laughs> it has been 300 days on this rock, and I'm ready to come home and reclaim what's mine. Jesus. You and France. Dear Josephine, <laughs> you still ain't called a road. I hope you had a chance. It's been 300 days in the last two minutes, John. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it has. <laughs> he ain't lying. <laughs> this, this could have been a mini-series, man. <laughs> I don't know. Freaking like his History Channel highlights. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now bring me my water slide. Open your mouth, please. Why? Is she poisoned or pregnant? Uh, she must got uh, what was the ashes? Ashes, we all fall down. Oh, she's got the plague. My suggestion is to stay in bed. She's got some disease, the flu thingy. She gets tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, yeah, that's... Is it illegal for a Napoleon to step foot here? Sure, I would imagine, unless we missed something, but... I mean, he was exiled. He seems like he's just, yeah, degaffing and coming back. A ship landed on the beach in Antibes this morning, and they are on the march. Napoleon Bonaparte is marching towards Paris. Who's with him? Do, 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 do. A delightful fanfare. <laughs> this is all for Napoleon. <laughs> General Marchand, in defense of the royal government of King Louis XVIII, requests that you surrender your weapons and cease your march so that you may be arrested and return to your island. <laughs> Will you please inform the general that I should like to come and speak with him? I have no fight with my own fifth army. So. Oh, still, yeah. little, he's still done a lot for them. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's why they're giving him the severance. <laughs> he wishes to speak. Nah. Ready? Yeah, yeah. We done talking, bro. And that's how Napoleon died. <laughs> soldiers of the 5th Regiment, do you recognize me? I am your daddy. Do you recognize me, soldiers? Yes, Emperor! Oh, dude. He's got one loyalist. I miss you. I'm melancholy for my home. Bored as hell. And for our victories together. Yeah, he did give us victories. <laughs> I want to come home. Will you join me? The hell just happened? He said like four sentences. Oh my god. Uh, this is gonna be real bad news. But is damn, this... that influence he held. Wow. I'm sure, dude. some variation of this happened, but yeah. But damn. I guess King Louis the Eighteenth ain't really earned their respect. He led them to a lot of victories, and he was always out there in the field. Yeah, he wasn't just chilling at home, bonded to these guys. Make France great again. On May twenty-sixth, Doctor Cobas, I was called and found her chest congested, her throat inflamed. Her illness was diphtheria. Diphtheria. Ah, what is that? On May twenty-ninth, last sacrament was given, and she died. Oh, I didn't even get to see her. And no one thought to notify me. It would. It was illegal at the time, sir. Do you blame me? <laughs> he just always makes it about himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course you don't. Does not to bear the burden of responsibility. <laughs> this narcissist. This narcissist. I want the letters that I wrote to her. I'm sorry, I don't have them. They were stolen by her valet. Wow. Where did she keep them? Yeah, same tissue. In the cupboard in her bedroom next to her bed. Next to her heart. I'm sorry. I forgive you. I forgive you? Do you blame me? Of course not. I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> he knows his place in the world. Jeez. This congregation of allies shall form along the borders of France and Belgium an army. The muscles from Brussels. 
120,000 troops from Prussia. This vermin has routed the farmyards of Europe while the farmers snore. Ouch. We should have struck this blow long ago. No. Where's your loyalty lie, man? I believe I speak for all of us when I say that the only regret we all share is that we allowed this vermin to live at all. Wowie. I wish we got to see more of that stuff you were talking about. 125,000 men and 100,000 men <laughs> against our 125,000 men. This is a fight on land. So we could take them. Britain does not know how to do that. I know. Strike quickly against Wellington. Defeat them separately. Disallow them from uniting forces here. Waterloo. Home of the excellent water slides. Morning. So he just like assumed command? Yeah, enough people faithful to him. They were able to just didn't have to go to workarounds with the whole. I mean, they are the the enforcers. So if enough people are just like we follow this and guy, what like, are you we're just do? gonna go to war? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, water. I I believe Waterloo is not gonna end well, but <laughs> but also. Why would you ruin that, John? I don't know. This is my guess. I'm just judging by where we are in the movie. <laughs> This is all, like, we're into history I didn't even know about. Like, I didn't know he came back from exile and, like, got his troops back and... <laughs> Tell him to make the rain stop. <laughs> right, yes, sir, right? We'll, we'll get right on that. Now listen very carefully. Patience. We must hold this ground. Let him come to us! Oh, boy. Get a little nap in. Now there he is. He appears to be just sleeping. Appearances can be deceiving. I have the Emperor in my sight. Do I have permission to fire? Certainly not. Generals commanding armies have better things to do with their time than to shoot at one another. Hold your fire, Rifleman, on pain of death. Wowie. Blue card 11 to 12 miles. I want to report every hour. Yes, sir. Blue car. Prussians on the roadside, 12 miles. Come on, Napoleon. Prussian troops have been sighted on the roadside. Ready the cannons. Ready the cannons! <laughs> <laughs> the looks. The rain has stopped, sir. You boys did good. Stop the rain. God is on our side. Fire! 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 Two. Patience. Patience. With patience. The Everyone, be patient. <laughs> so eye the ball and get out of the way. That one drummer just got dusted. Infantry! This seems like a go. terrible idea. Yeah, that patience gonna come in handy now. Oh, not the cannons. I cannot imagine being on a battlefield like this. Oh. Wow! Wilhelm scream. Oh, the amount of dudes exploding in this movie. Which isn't high, but it, it's high enough to catch me by surprise every time. Nah, he's losing his confidence, man. The Duke of Wellington. Prepare to receive cavalry. Oh. Hold our ground. Stand fast to the last man. We must not be beat. Absolutely. Holy shit. Oh boy. Oh my god. Whoa, what do you call this formation? I say it in the name of the Emperor. Fire! This is a terrible plan. Jesus. Oh my god. Yeah. Just doesn't have the same old ring as it used Go to. Go die, Napoleon. Go yeah. die. Nah, he can't die until they play the ABBA song. Oh. Whoa. 
Wow, man. That's a hell of a formation they got. Wow. Man, Circle what insane square. choreography Circle you got here. For the horses and everything to keep this all in formation. It's impressive. Wow. Ha. Whoa. How do they These get poor that horses. shot? There better be an SPCA certification on this. He looks so tired. You are the brave of Austerlitz! Never surrender! For Holman and glory! He's gonna die. <laughs> yeah. Wow, dude. Wow. Cool. <laughs> it is exhausting being at your left hand. Just, everyone just gets like a great shot. <laughs> everyone who gets a shot just falls down for it, you know? They're not like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> dead. Ah. There's, there's instant death, everyone. <laughs> maybe that helps, though. Maybe no matter how bad your injury is, maybe you just lay down and hope that, you know. I would just fall. Yeah. Once, I, once I fire, just fall. <laughs> just lay still as you can until this is all over and then crawl away. <laughs> God, what a mess. What a mess. Cavalry advance, sir. Cavalry advance. They really do capture the the epicness in these war scenes a lot. Yeah, I just like the high body count, the tangibility, how like, close and personal it there's all such is. A, there's such a roar to it. Ah! Nice little jab of the stab. Yeah. Post What's Napoleon's the actual body count? Yeah, he's gonna die right now. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> sure. God's not here, man. He's busy. They all are just ready to die. Whoa, Whoa dude. Cut him off at the retreat. Don't let him retreat. Yeah. Oh, damn. Wow. Plymouth. The first battle we've seen him lose. I guess. Or like truly outright lose. Yeah. It is geometry. I simply know precisely where to place a cannon. But tragically, I cannot transfer this knowledge to my marshals. <laughs> what is most difficult in life? Fair. Accepting the failures of <laughs> Yep. You must not do that. <laughs> yep. This band did not grow at all. What are they doing there? It's, uh, it's the midshipman. They adore him. Come get him out. <laughs> Your Grace. Good morning, General. These boys are delightful. And this breakfast? Now I know why you have such a successful navy. Haha. <laughs> Unit runs on its stomach. I've never visited the English countryside. I imagine I'll love the Cotswolds. <laughs> and my dear sir. It is only by a narrow margin of opinion that you have been spared the fate of being shot. <laughs> I'm afraid it's impossible for the British government to allow you to stay in England. Is it just like vacation right now? Yep. <laughs> you are permitted three officers and twelve servants to accompany you into exile. Exile will be contained to the island of St. Helen. Oh my god. Under the watchful eye of Governor Hudson Lowe and his family. Would it be better in my last exile? It's a small island, more of a rock, really. A thousand miles from the mainland of Africa. Wow, it's even worse. You don't have time to reflect. Sure. I'm see sure all of us plenty see. of that. Your presence verified twice daily by the orderly officer. You will have an anklet on your ankle. Seems like his greatest losses started coming in the form of when he lost Josephine. Yeah. Behind every great dictator is a great woman. I hate to see you alone, my sweet stubborn emperor. I let you loose and let you come to ruin. Next time, I will be emperor, and you will do as I say. Yes, mommy. Could be worse. Yeah? You are right. Every night I beg to see you in my dreams, and when I do, <laughs> you turn me away. Flies in the wine. 
Can I tell you what I have waiting for you? It is a secret, and I will show you when you arrive. Come to me, Napoleon. That's just go the die. Best water. Let's try this again. Go die. Get that poison going. Look at this Godfather three shot right here. Died on the 5th of May, 1821, after six years of exile. 61 battles. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. One day. Excellent. Those are the French who died. Uh, I guess. Just the French alone. How many other casualties? Oh boy. I'm assuming it was the French who died in that list because it said in um, one of them that 460,000 died and he said that they returned to troops with only 40,000 after sending in 500,000. So 500,000 minus 40,000 would be 460,000. Okay. Before he got exiled, it was said 500,000 troops were sent and only 40,000 returned. Was it five hundred thousand? That's yeah. I'll, I'll trust. I'll I'll trust your recollection. No, is there a specific number? Damn, that's yeah. wild. I mean, yeah. Like either way, whether it's combined or if it's just French, it's still like insane. And I mean, that four hundred sixty thousand was like what their combined resources across their allies, right? Ugh. Is there a post credit scene? All right, Reject Nation. So today I want to share something with you that has been a wonderful addition to my health and fitness journey that I discovered during the holidays, and that is Liquid IV's Hydration Multiplier. I'm down to my very last packet, and I'm freaking out, but it's okay. I got more in the mail. Now, a lot of you have been so kind to notice how I've been working on my physical health. Thank you for all the compliments. And one thing I learned is that proper hydration is absolutely crucial, especially post-workout and pre-filming after post-workout. And my wife actually introduced me to this product, which is perfect because because we not only care about quality, but a good taste and quality product. So whether it's after a sweaty workout or just after, you know, a good night out, you know what I'm saying? Efficient hydration and replenishing electrolytes is key. You just feel better and it tastes fantastic. I can't emphasize that enough. Another thing that I'm always on the lookout for too is products that have zero sugar or zero sugar added because that's one of my main dietary restrictions throughout the week. And they of course got products that fit that description that also taste good too. So yes, thank you so much. So Liquid IV's hydration multiplier is in summary is they are a non-GMO electrolyte drink that delivers hydration into your bloodstream faster and more efficient than water alone. Because sometimes drinking a whole gallon is not always efficient, but in fact, it can provide the same hydration as drinking two to three bottles of water. Most also big on efficiency. Plus, it's packed with 11 essential vitamins, and we know vitamins are good for the body. It's vegan, soy-free, gluten-free, and dairy-free. You can customize the water amount to your taste. Again, perfect for post-night recovery, traveling, or just having a big night out. You know what I mean? No, I won't. So, if you want to boost your support for the channel and boost your hydration game, go to liquidiv.com and use promo code REJECTS at checkout. That's liquidiv.com, promo code REJECTS. And remember, Liquid IV, it's not a real IV, but it sure feels like it. So stay hydrated, stay healthy, and let's keep crushing those health and fitness goals together in the year 2024. Well, gang, if you've made it to this point, we just finished watching Ridley Scott's Napoleon. Why don't you leave some five-star reviews on that Apple Music or Spotify, wherever you might be listening to this. And uh, we're going to hop into our thoughts on the movie. Unless we have anything else to do first. Unless there's anything that we ought to dictate to people. No. no? Okay. Well, damn. Uh, <laughs> this has been an interesting year for movies like this. This this is, uh, you know, a big sweeping epic of sorts, but it's also got a very sort of ironic quality at the center of it. And uh, having seen it, funny, Killers of the Flower Moon is here on screen. They want us to watch it after The Hunger Games and after The Bricklayer in that order. Um, but that movie kind of... Uh, it makes for an interesting compliment to me because these are two of the most striking and, and you know, talked about movies of the year from two veteran filmmakers that both showcase, like, what can happen when just, like, horribleness and, and, and conniving is left to kind of its own devices and, and, and when you're in a time where, like, information is restricted so you have, you know, 
both the immense possibility of what you know machinations can do, and also just like idiocy and and pettiness can do. And whereas Killers is a very austere, very straight movie, I felt like this endeavored to explore similar territory, obviously with a different historical context, uh, but but with a much more deeply ingrained sense of yeah, irony, humor, etc. But yeah, what what you think, sir? Um, my nice side is just wanting to say mixed bag. Sure. Because I can easily pinpoint what I liked about it. Yes. See, it's easy for me to like isolate what I really like about it. It's very easy. Overall, I'm not sure I like this movie. Sure. To be told, sure, sure. Uh, overall, I'm not yeah. sure I like this movie. Uh, I think it, it, it kind of, if it just felt way edited down, and the I, I don't really find the story itself that enriching of a story. It's more like I watched a bunch of things happen. Even <laughs> Napoleon himself doesn't really have uh things happen for and to napoleon but him as a character doesn't really have a real descent as a as a person or an arc in any real way like he kind of just starts off this way and he's a little bit more that guy (laughs) by the end of it yeah it's not exactly much of a uh uh, in terms of a narrative i think it's it's kind of weak and 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 then I, we we're like we we're saying it throughout the whole reaction that it just kept feeling really pared down, like with the way they would handle time jumps and time spans, and then you would have t- scenes that were like, "Oh, this is kind of like uh, emotionally dramatically, um, I'm into it." And then we're just sometimes sometimes we'll do a time jump without informing you we've done a time jump, yeah. or they they do a time jump and they inform you, and then it would ultimately lead to like battle scenes that were really grandiose uh epic and on scale and shot with such visceral nature that i haven't seen in any of the 2023 movies to this degree especially in a practicality scale Mm -hmm. where it would blend cgi in ways that uh, at times other than like cannon and maybe some fighter that i couldn't really tell but like this like those battle sequences were just beyond epic um at the same time, when I would step back, I would go, but I have, like, no emotional investment in, <laughs> in this fight. I don't know the soldiers, all this stuff about what Napoleon cares about outside of Josephine. I don't really know. Uh, this this reverency for France, I don't understand. Other than he, he just, There's a lot of things that are being, like, dictated to me and told to me. But, again, it was kind of like watching a, uh, a history book <laughs> it was a, 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 with questioning constantly what is real, what, what is accurate and what is not accurate. Uh, and, and the reason why I would do that is because I wasn't lost enough in the narrative to not give a shit about that. Sure. I was so aware of uh, a lot of the shortcomings that this movie was doing and like the first hour, I would be like, "I oh, know I'm enjoying this." So there's there's a bit of a farcical element, as we were pointing out, and this humorous touch where they would use music to con- that would be in in a fun juxtaposition, where it was like this classical elegance while like atrocities are taking place, and it would magnify uh, some of the goofiness and silliness and how these people were kind of a joke. It magnifies but- the yeah the the weird artifice of high society in. A time especially such as this where it's like conflict is so tangible. But it lost that. Sure. That humor. It lost it lost all that for me. Uh in the last like hour and a half of this film <laughs> or something. Some some part of that runtime. The one of the things that was really clicking for me, and then it just starts becoming like we gotta just clip through this and clip through this and clip through this. And out of two and a half hours, I didn't really feel anything hmm. when I was watching it. I, I, I was I was watching certain times. I would I would admire something I'm watching, or I'd be like, "Ooh, that's." I might react to like a violent scene, um, or I might be, "Oh, he's kind of an asshole here." Uh, but I, I think like the storytelling itself is is one of the things that I can have an issue with Ridley Scott movies nowadays. Like hmm. sometimes he comes out with a banger. 
Um, and then other times it comes out with stuff that just kind of feels like it's pretty, it's great to look at, great cast. Um, but in terms of like your overall story, there's not much of an impact. And I think the impact, maybe there's historians who watch this and are like, oh, but seeing this, maybe that like tickles your fancy in some way. But from just a movie going experience, I think it's kind of empty. And that's my biggest issue with it is that uh, I, I didn't latch on to anything. And it was never even cold in a way that was um, appealing. You know, like I like a cold, harsh movie. I like, I like watching the bad guy be the main character. I, I, I love all those kinds of films, you know, but there's a... a, a there's still a voice and a and a pull from the heart that it has to have, and I, and I felt like this was. I, I just think it was edited down, and sure, yeah. And I imagine there's an exception. Is there? You kept saying the thing about a longer cut. Is there? Is there a thing about a longer cut? Yeah. Okay, yeah. There's yeah. going to be like a four hour version of this movie. Yeah, and that like shows. Yeah. But unlike Rebel Moon, where I'm like really like I'm not really sure I want to see a longer cut. I'd be curious to see a longer cut of this one. I would. Yeah. I would be. I'll watch the Rebel Moon cut. But I well, in the I'm Rebel Moon, it's obvious. It appears obvious as to what might get put back in. Whereas this, you're sort of like other than fleshing out certain beats of history that maybe fly by. You know. There's a. It seems like there's a broader array of things that that extra time could allot for, you know, rather than clearly there were plot elements removed, you know. Yeah, I think this lacks strong characterization and 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 I keep going back to the word narrative. It's just at the end of the day, you have to tell a story, mm. and, and so even if it's a slice of life or something, you have to tell the story. There's got to be some kind of narrative here, and it. I guess we technically watched the rise and fall of Napoleon, but the way they would handle the, the times and when you would dump around time and then what you chose to focus on in those times and you see what they have at their hands at their disposal when it comes to a budget that like, Oh yeah, you could easily probably have like other scenes on the cutting room floor that really got you hooked into stuff, whether it be from just a, the mind intellectually is more interested or the heart is more invested. Mm. Uh, and to me, this movie kind of did neither. <laughs> I did like two and a half hours. I was just watching stuff happen with occasionally being amused by uh, Joaquin Phoenix's performance and admiring Vanessa Kirby's work. But uh, out of a big cast, I mean, like I can't really name anyone else other than them, but I, there's a lot of people here. Like no one really stands out as a performer. Sure. Joaquin Phoenix kind of felt like, again, because of the the story they presented it, it's it, it it's not really i don't feel like i got to know napoleon really yeah i got to know some things about napoleon sure some stuff that maybe people like rumored about what he was like as a person i can uh, tell but, how this movie feels about napoleon but i never got into the mind of napoleon i never got into why napoleon really is the way he is it, it's just things that were alluded to it, it, it never felt like it got confident enough to embrace a, a voice or his perspective, you know, like it, that's where I felt like it was at odds where like I could feel I could feel the judgment of Ridley Scott of the story here, but it never quite took the perspective of Napoleon when that's what the movie's doing is telling it from the perspective of Napoleon while occasionally cutting to someone else. Um yeah, yeah, it doesn't really extrapolate on his perspective. It's like you understand his perspective and since it's being told largely from his deluded point of view it's like you don't yeah there's there i i can see the value in doing that and i can see why you would want to pitch it that way for a movie like this but i do think that other elements would have to kind of change a bit to really complement that or to make it feel like it isn't just you know two and a half hours of watching like a terrible narcissist never learn and just, you yeah. know, parade around the world being petulant. And, 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 and yeah, like it, it is, it is an interesting, it's one of these movies and, and I'm not going to, I'm trying not to harp on it too much, but there are elements of this experience that do kind of remind me of the debate that I've heard and, and been somewhat a part of when it came to killers, of the flower movies, like, both of these movies have this quality where, like, when you get what the movie's doing, 
you get what the movie's doing. And, and, and this movie especially doesn't really deviate a whole lot from the thing that it's doing, which is to present Napoleon, this guy who has this status in history, who clearly was able to do uh, great and devastating things in equal, often simultaneous measure. Um, and there's something obviously interesting about that in juxtaposition to our current society. We have many a Napoleon figure at large in politics and otherwise here today. You know, obviously you can draw your through line to Trump if you want to with a movie like this. But it is that thing of like, OK, so f f I can imagine that really working for somebody for two plus hours. And certainly I feel like this movie like it, it, this is a potentially like a whole is not as great as the sum of the parts because all the parts are pretty great it's like all the performances really committed all of the designs the way that it lives in this time and place to really sell the tangibility and the harshness and the contrast between high society and all the ceremonial stuff that people like to stand on especially in this moment in time and they even highlight it on occasion you know polite society and the the, you know, extreme depravity that can be, you know, propped up on top of that or, you know, any number of other atrocious human elements. But yeah, it's like the movie doesn't position itself to extrapolate on why Napoleon is, as, as you mentioned, or to... It's weird. It's like you don't have to show him sympathetically, and it would be a different kind of movie if you did endeavor to show things that explain why he is how he is. Um, but yeah, it's like as it exists here and now, I can easily see a lot of viewers getting to the end and being like, okay, that was a lot of miserable and a lot of ironic, but yeah, what is this amounting to beyond all of that? Plus, you know, a, a, a quick sprint through history yeah. that I imagine will probably pace a little differently and perhaps a little more breathably for people who know the history well. Um, but yes, yeah, for for the rest of us who are either rusty or or ignorant toward a lot of the greater details, it does feel like whoa. Okay, wait, hold on, we're hopping through time, and even the way they leave the some of the titles on the screen that are explaining things to you are like pretty quick and moving along, and uh, yeah, yeah, it is one where it's like there's so much to appreciate, but what it's giving you, you know, if you especially if you see it from early on and that's not enough for you i feel like this would be a very long yeah. experience for a lot of people no i i think i was just watching f facts or depictions of things uh the entire time you know if you if you look at a movie like i don't know uh th there will be blood uh, uh, uh for example right i am um, that movie is a really harsh cold mean movie about one guy who starts off greedy and he's even greedier by the end, <laughs> and he, but he's left he's lonely worse, and yeah. miserable and he's getting worse. And you're watching this guy like deteriorate into a monster, yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's hopelessness yeah. for that man by the end and what he's lost himself to in the pursuit of more. And he's, he's completely lonely. And, and here I use that as a comparison because there's at least like a mood about that. There's a there's at least like a terror about that. Yeah. And you're you're watching the if affect it has on other people, like really living in that, watching how other people get lost in the vortex of this man. And here I feel like they they say things <laughs> like yeah. like the one guy where he's like his egotism and uh, the way he rules is like the the Paul the, the dark Paul that he casts over my all this shit. I'm like I don't really feel like I saw any of that. I don't really feel like I got any of that of <laughs> wh what it was. What he was like, really, what he was like as a general. Other than you watch the battle happen, you don't mm -hmm. really see him his mindset as a general. Um, you don't really see what he's like as a ruler as an emperor. You don't really see all these things that they're saying that he does that are terrible because I'm like, from what you've shown me, I, I would be like, other than him conquering, I, I'm not really getting any additional context to understand what he's done that's made him so such a polarizing figure. What's made him so terrible other than he, he, he left people down. Yeah. I'm not really being fed that, you know, and... I'm not seeing why again, everything comes back to why, <laughs> right? You, you gotta, you gotta show, not tell And this movie relied a lot on occasionally dropping some nuggets of information to make you go. Here's why when you, you have to let the audience marinate in some like, um, whatever it may be, 
atrocities or the love that you see that he has. And I think the time where they gave the most delicacy was the thing they were like placing all their eggs in one basket for was this tragic romance with uh, this Josephine woman, uh, which, yeah, was probably the most interesting part to me. And the movie treats it like it's the most interesting part about his character. And I... I think they lose sight of that. Like it's, it's kind of, it's a, it, to me, it's a disjointed experience. It's, it lacks focus and it doesn't really know where it wants to place its heart and focus at. You can't just cut to a cool battle scene. Uh, you can't, yeah. you, you can't just tell me like updates on what's going on. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's what this movie does. It's just like an update, ex- update the experience, update the timeline. Uh, here's what's happening. And then, and then narrative becomes confusing on dynamics and relationships and stuff. Uh, I, 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 like, oh, what happened with his brother? You know, there was a whole thing with his brother. Like, what happened with his brother? Sure. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, totally. Uh, it, that, that's something I'm just remembering right now. It, and, and it's a big, yeah, I'm not sure, I don't think I like the movie. Yet. <laughs> I, I really it's, don't. It's how it, it, it plays the concoction of all these elements. Because on the one hand, I can see the, there, there's a lot of th- the beginnings of a thread. It's like, I get the use of the battles as they juxtapose against the other scenes because it's all this again when you're just alone in some big ornate room and it's people talking you know you're able to really see the disconnect between again how especially harsh and nasty war at this point in time is uh and how you know you're so far removed when you're, you know, back home or in some great mansion plotting all this stuff versus yeah. actually being out on the battlefield or whatever. And and yeah, it's like you have this notion that, man, the people are really behind him and his true like part of the reason the moment with the troops in the wood uh, toward the end right before Waterloo kind of worked for me is because I couldn't tell really what to expect and i was like oh no he's not gonna win them back is he but i didn't have really reason to go like i know that these dudes are super dedicated to him it was so like that moment worked because of that but at the same time i feel like the rest of the movie kind of suffers because of that because yeah it's like you said we don't really get to see the soldiers even through his you can still do that through his perspective but see him being you know of those people and you know rallying them to a point where you're like well i see how dedicated these people are or uh inversely like throughout the movie he may he, he makes mention to like the people the, for, i'm doing this for the people of france I, I the people they love me they look to me and we almost never see the people which again is i think somewhat intentional and somewhat of a fair choice because it's illustrating how removed especially in a time and place like this where you're confined to just letters and what you can see and what trusted people relay to you. Like, I get, again, the purpose, but as it's all executed here into this melting pot, it does feel kind of impersonal and a little disconnected at times. And then you have the romance element, which, again, kind of reminded me of a Killers of the Flower Moon thing where you're watching this clearly toxic, bad situation go down. But at the core of it, you're like... But maybe in some weird, twisted way, they do love each other. Although here, while I did appreciate those scenes and the performing of them, I didn't think it was as strong or interesting as, say, it was in Killers. Because here, a lot of those scenes are like kind of the same scene, just in different years and after different battles. And I didn't really... I started to lose the plot in terms of like, I get what his feelings are about her. I can't tell what her actual feelings are. And like, she'll write these letters and part of my brain is going, okay, I think there's got to be a lot of ironic double speak in here, but she's still writing him. And you know, they still maintain this contact. And even after all this, and she's like laughing at him during the divorce proceedings, I, I guess she loved him somehow, but also I kind of don't buy it. And, and, and yeah, you're left with the muck of certain, of these choices where you're sort of like, I don't really know what the choice fully was. Well, I, I don't under, I don't think they, what could have helped is if they, if it seemed like within the passage of time that our characters were aging at all. That, and they, they don't, (laughs) they don't, I don't feel like any time passes for our performers, like Joaquin Phoenix and Vanessa Kirby. Like, yeah, they just look the same. (laughs) Yeah. Their hair changes, but then you're, but but we also live in a time where everyone's got like 20 wigs. So like, yeah, you get to the end and I was starting to go, okay, like he, I guess in the right light, he kind of looks like older and more pale, but I feel like that's just kind of more got to do with like the performance and the fact that he's like 
kind of slowly giving up here at the end, you know, rather than it's actually being like a choice within, you know, yeah, that aspect of the the craft. Like the whole thing with like being exiled and stuff, like that first year, he was, the, the movie glosses over that. When he's first exiled, he's he's exiled in this film's runtime for like five minutes. And I didn't know as a part of and history, he I like, I, need to, I need to come back. Like, I'm like, what? Yeah. In my time of experience, I'm not saying I need like an hour. <laughs> I'm saying that I, you, this movie just glosses over it and he's like i'm tired i'm like well i in my time i i feel like you just got here <laughs> you know and it's funny but i feel like they could have still maintained that the humorousness of that while also yeah at least committing to it a little more for so then a viewer like me can be surprised when it's like oh i didn't realize he was exiled once came out of exile tried yeah. to you know do one more coup and then failed and then got super exiled like i didn't realize the whole waterloo context that way so yeah, yeah, I don't know. You're, yeah. you're right. It's like everything, even though this is a movie that, again, uh, w looks like a classical painting, and I like the contrast of how it doesn't behave that way, but but yeah, like, there's a grace uh, of pace that I don't think they quite nailed, and I wonder how I would feel if I didn't know that this is supposed to be longer, and certainly, again, like, a rebel moon, you can tell without having to be told that, whereas this... You know, I might not have known as well had I not been aware of that. But also, I mean, you know, you could have easily miniseriesed this. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this should be a like a story with this much time span. Like, I don't know how you could tell this even in four hours. I, I, yeah. I that's, that that honestly feels like it'd be better. Still feels like it might miss the mark <laughs> with the amount they want to tell. It still feels a little too. I don't know. It feels brash. like a lot for what this is trying to do. Yeah, you're trying to span a lot, uh, uh, like a little too much, I think, is, and when with the amount you're trying to incorporate. Because, again, even in a movie like There Will Be Blood, you don't really know why he is the way he is, but they they give you other things to really feed off of and s sink your teeth into. And you spend whereas enough this, time with other characters to get some of that development. Yeah, whereas here, you know, uh, I don't need to know exactly why he loves France, but... To, for it to really drive like a wedge between the marriage so much and then for his desire for more like i need some conflict that truly arises from that <laughs> you know i need something more some like, kind of personal hollywood it up a little bit would you do it's, it's do something <laughs> it's moving quick enough it, that it just feels like well this is just how he thinks so naturally he must just need to ascend yeah. to the highest level of rule because this feels <laughs> this still feels like a movie you know this still feels like a hollywood film it doesn't feel like oh i'm stepping into a moment in time yeah. and that's okay i'm totally okay with it feeling like a film uh but if you're gonna do that then hollywood i'm saying hollywood it up then create some drama <laughs> create some real conflict here sure. do something to, to give it that extra that, that little sizzle <laughs> so that way that that way we're we're on board for some of the more dramatic journeys and, and stuff like that or, or have something yeah. to care about but i didn't care about anything that was happening man i, I did not care like it is one it of is, those cinema films where yeah. you go through the first hour and you're like, some pretty cool, some pretty yeah. good craft on display, and then you get past a point and you're like, that good will's worn off. But this is moving the, at the same, this is moving with the same sensibility, and it isn't showing any sign of, yeah, of, you know, cr picking up a thing or yeah. descending into a thing. It, it seems like, and especially with a, a character you know will have a significant fall, even if you don't have the details. It, it does start to feel like you're just going to kind of see a collection of events until it's done rather than feeling like you're going on a journey that has a momentum of some a story kind. like this needs a Martin Scorsese touch of a, of, of a rise and fall of a, of a, of an individual where you see like the glory that he got to experience and why he'd want that back. Yeah. When he's like talking with the children who admire him, I'm like I got no sense of this world that has been developed here. Yeah. That these, that there, that there would be children who would want to like hear from him. I got no sense. Of, I'm like, how would you say, I, I'm so confused on the level of respect. Cause I'm mainly checking in with the other political people. Yeah. Who just dog this guy, <laughs> you know? So and I'm, I'm not really in tune with how everyone else views him. So that's why when the soldiers do come around, I'm like, Oh, this is kind of a surprise. Oh, my God. He's leading them into fighting? What the fuck? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I think yeah. this is a case where you could benefit. And, hey, Ridley Scott, I mean, like, respect to Ridley Scott because, again, like, half the time he shows back up these days and I'm like, 
damn, dude, you'd be cranking out movies like, you know, these. if you spent maybe all of that time on half as many movies, maybe they would all be a little bit better. But, you know, he like he's a pro, obviously. And, and something like this, especially during the first half, I was like, man, though. You know, even at his age and as long as he's been at this, Ridley is really, he's you know, he, yeah. And, and it's a, a marvel that this looks as good as it does, you know, for, again, the fact that he does stay so busy and it is as tangible as it is. Like, it feels dug into. But, yeah, like, I don't associate him with the same level of human thoughtfulness. Like, you know, Ridley Scott stuff can be big on ideas, but I feel like, and, and just continuing on this Scorsese touchstone, like, I do feel like he is a filmmaker who has a certain level of compassion that can carry, like, even if you're watching A Killers of the Flower Moon who has a lead character and many of your lead characters are, like, unsavory people, half of them are dumb and narcissistic and whatever else, there's yeah. still, like, you can tell that the author of this is looking compassionately at, like, how the humanity of the situation got this way. And I don't feel like this movie has its eye very much on that, which I think I don't need like a full, like I personally got to know the, the tragedy of, uh, of Napoleon. Like, you know, you can still be a bit cynical or you can still be a, a bit of a satire or a farce, but I think, yeah, that, that humanist angle could have helped to temper a lot of things across this. All right, so it's got a fifty-eight percent critic score, fifty-nine percent audience score. Okay, wow, the critic score and audience score are very much in sync with each other. Sure, yeah, that is very, very much in sync. Yeah, that's like wild. You never see that. I, I actually expected one of them to be high, like significantly higher than the other. Mm -hmm. oh, that's low. Um, <laughs> I liked House of Gucci. That was all right. Oh, I want to see House of Gucci. It's not. I didn't, I didn't mind it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. Last duel, I just can't find my can't muster the strength to watch that movie. I just can't, uh, just can't muster the strength to watch it. I, like, and, and from what I heard, I'm like, I don't know if I want to sit through that. I just don't want to sit through it. And <laughs> no. it's the one movie like that too, where I constantly heard people going like, "Actually, the, those of us who went saw it, it's like it's pretty. It's one of his best." And, and even still, I'm just like, I still just don't know if I'm gonna if I even care. I just don't want to experience <laughs> that. Yeah, like I, I, for when this maybe in like ten or fifteen years when we're far removed from like the moment in time that it was also co-opting to to come into existence. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. I mean, damn, he made The Martian in twenty fifteen. Shit. I mean, yeah, like that it's. Have, I mean, according to Rotten Tomatoes, Last Duel seems like his last great film, which was only in twenty twenty one. Like, he, like his one that's like, oh, people think this is a great movie, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And yeah. that's the thing is he hasn't gone to that place yet where he like makes one movie every six years. So it, it's like, I guess it's easier to look at Ridley Scott as having lost the touch, but then be reminded like, but every few movies he has one that people are like, this is at least better than just good or maybe even great. So like. You know, I, I'm torn because I'm glad to see him still out there, still kicking and still, you know, showing, you know, that he's got those chops. But also there are times where, yeah, I feel like he, he, his curmudgeonliness of the here and now maybe gets in the way of something that could impact a little bit more pressingly and, and uh, permeatingly, so to speak. Yeah. Because, I mean, clearly there's tons and tons of artistry on display. Um, all righty. Well. Okay, I'm good, John. Yeah, we're good. Well, gang, what'd you guys <laughs> think? You love Napoleon now? Do you sympathize with him? Leave us your thoughts. What was your favorite Oscar contender of 2023? Leave it in the C O M M E N T's. And hey, before we get out of here, let's do a patron of the day shout out. Michael B. Omni Media. Happy New Year, Michael B. All righty, guys, let me get this out of the way. He has a YouTube channel called Omni Media where he does reactions. He's been on this channel with us. I've Woo. done a few movies with him. It's a cover Tales of the Jedi. John covered a Mission Impossible one with him. Together. One movie I said counting. you could have one. One movie and counting. Um, well, you know what, man? I think for 2024, this whole, like, promoting you thing has to come this to an end. far enough. Because... Your channel I'm seeing is doing better now. Uh oh. And frankly, oh. I got a hint of a, a being threatened. Why would you do that to us? This whole like reactor community of we got to stick together and help each other out. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all just a, a bunch of, 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 of feigning pleasantries is what we do. But we all know that we want to dominate one another. And I don't care what kind deeds you've done. I don't care how long you've been pledged to our Patreon page. Your success is out of spite. Your shit has to end now, all yeah. right? You be as successful as you want, but from here on out, no more plugging Omni Media. I will uh, not be shouting uh, out, oh, Emma's a mother, and uh, as a Nancy, the number one can't believe. media. I don't want to do that anymore no. because watching your reactions to Reacher, oh, sure. Soka, uh, Echo, Echo most recently, yeah. uh, all the movies you've been covering oh, with these great looking thumbnails and wonderful commentary. And then every time I open up your videos and just seem like, man, this guy gets like nothing but positive comments yeah. because he's that good. I'm sick of talking about it, dude. Absolutely sick of promoting O as an oh my God, he's still here. <laughs> M as a man, why? Why do we still keep promoting him? N as a no, we'll no, no longer promote Omni Media. Yeah. One as in there can only be one like Highlander, <laughs> and then media as in I'm gonna stop watching his media. Stop watching the media. Yeah. Omni Media. Yeah. Omni Media. But in in seriousness, you know. Succeed as much as you can. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, come up with some goals for this year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah think of how you can improve your operation without, uh, you know, outstripping ours. Happy New Year, you dick. Mm -hmm.